Okay guys, so I just wanted to do a video super quick. Um, it's just a video for two transactions that I made in the PBA. Um, the way transactions work are you can only do them in transfer windows, which are week weeks one and I believe eight. I haven't really decided yet. It's going to be whatever the middle of the season is. So right after the draft, um, up until week two starts, you can do you know trades and stuff. But, uh, yeah, what I, I, I did, uh, I just, uh, just, just uh, oh, God, it's, uh, 3 or 6 a.m. and I can't speak. I just decided to pick up some mons and drop some mons because I don't really care to bother with trading. It's just too complicated. I saw there was some stuff that I could use, so I grabbed it. So, um, I realized that, well, okay, first of all, let's just say, I need to start saying, by saying this. I have, I have embraced my team. I have embraced what it is. It is what it is, and what it is is hyper offense. And I have come to terms with that. And I now also decided, like having come to terms with that fact, I also realized that my fastest one is base 111 speed, which for a hyper offense team is not going to cut it. So, what I had to do was look at Mons and decide what I wanted to change, because, like I said in my uh, original draft recap, Nine Tails was expendable. I could have dropped Nine Tails, because I picked it up really hastily, and didn't really think about it. I'm like, it's cool, and I really, didn't really know what else to get, and now after the draft, I've had some time to think about it, since when I drafted Nine Tails and Blastos. I did a lot of this draft when I was at work, so I could only check my phone for a few, for like, a few seconds at a time, uh, and not too frequently. Uh, because I did it on a pretty busy day, so, um, yeah, I didn't really put much thought into the picks, but now I'm picking from scraps, I guess, but Greenwich is a damn good scrap. So I decided to get rid of Fat Leo because, like, I wanted to keep Fat Leo because a Rapid Spinner would be really, a Rapid Spinner is really good, and one that doesn't get walled by most ghost types. Gorgas, for example, doesn't wall this thing unless he's specially defensive, like if I'm a Life Orb... If I'm modest life with Dark Pulse, then Gorgas doesn't wall me. So, that's just one example. <laughs> and it can't spin block. I mean, it can spin block, but then I just kill it. So, it doesn't really help because I can just spin block on any other opportunity if Gorgas is down. Or I can just predict it and click Dark Pulse because who doesn't really go in who doesn't go into Gorgas on regular Blastoise, right? So. That's just one example. I don't, I don't even know who has Gorgas, but that is just one example. It's a good. It's not as good as Mega Blast. I said, you know, killing spin blockers, but it, it's good. So I I wanted to keep it, but I couldn't. I because picking up Greninja would give me three water types, and that's just too much. Two is fine as long as if your third water type is Greninja. Like I have a rule, no more than uh, one main type per like per team, so I, I never make a team with like two of the same main types, uh, unless they're incredibly different mods, like I'm sure I've had like, maybe flying, you know, two flying types or whatever, which I do have, I think I have like three now, or maybe four, but that's like, it, that's an extremely versatile type. Types like water, if you have two water types, for me that's a little weird, um, as I, you know, as I, as I, as I had Blastoise and Huntail, uh, but if you have Huntail and Greninja, that's a little different because the fact that they're both weak to electric isn't really relevant because neither of them are going to stay in on electric attacks. Neither of them are really going to stay in on any offensive attacks because they just can't take them. Like, neither of them can take moves. So, like, I already had two. I couldn't have three. Three was just too many. Uh, so I had to draw Blastoise. Uh, because I had to drop Blastoise, I had to pick up Aerodactyl for an, another Defogger, because I I can't have no hazard removal. Blastoise with Rapid Spin was pretty good, and I can't have no hazard removal. I need hazard removal on this team, because I don't want to just lose to hazards, because rocks do a lot. Now, rocks, uh, adding Aerodactyl also gives me another rock weakness and another ice weakness, so that puts me at four of each, which is... That's becoming a problem, but with hyper offense, I'm hoping that it isn't as much of a factor as 
it could otherwise be, and if I, with me having this many offensive mons, I can rotate out uh, these weaknesses depending on the matchup. So if, like, I can bring all four mons weak to ice, or I can bring one, and my team could still be as effective depending on the matchup. So I don't really want to. I don't really want to do this, but I need a Defogger and Aerodactyl, and uh, Scout the Aerodactyl, coming back from UGBC Season 1 when I had him, before I dropped him, because he wasn't a very good Defogger, uh, so it's really funny, but he also gets that 130 speed, which I really need for my Hyper Offense, as well as Greninja, Greninja was the key to all of this, I needed Greninja, he was the first mod I left at, that 122 I think speed, yeah 122, that 122 speed is really good. On a mod that sets spikes and's got a great move pool and can U-turn, which is amazing for the team. Uh, Greninja was essential. I absolutely needed Greninja. If I wasn't getting Greninja, I wasn't making these deals, these uh, drops. So, you know, had to do that. And then I dropped Nine Tails because I mean, I don't know. It's all right. It doesn't really. I like. I don't know. I didn't have much of a chance to use it because this is only week one, and I haven't even had my week one battle yet. And I don't know if I'm even bringing it to week one. Like, I might, I might not. I haven't even decided yet. So, I don't know. Uh, there won't be. I guess I, may, I guess I might not even use it at all. But I decided that uh, a mod that fits something I desperately need. This is what I was telling Mike, Magmar711. He wanted to run Intimidate Staraptor instead of Reckless. And I was like, dude, don't run Intimidate just in case of something. Something vague. Run Reckless, uh, because you know it will give you an effect. You know that running Reckless gives you something that you can control. Damage that you can control on a certain mod. Your damage output increases, and that is something that you can control by putting Reckless on. By putting Intimidate, you potentially stop a sweep or, or a mod from killing something, but there's no guarantee that you're going to be healthy enough to live the hit, there's no guarantee that uh, your opponent brings physical attackers. I mean that. I know that may sound crazy, but I've brought only special attackers a few times last season. So there's no guarantee that reckless, or there's no guarantee that intimidate would be good uh, for Mike, just in case. Whereas if you brought reckless, there's a specific purpose, and he could always rely on it to fill that specific uh, purpose. And that's pretty much the same here. I Like I said in the draft recap, I picked um, Ninetales just because, because it might be good, you know, whatever. But uh, with Aerodactyl, I do have a specific purpose. It's to defog and to be incredibly fast. And I mean, with a 105 attack stat, it's good. And it also gets taunt and rocks, which is... So this thing is my only non-offensive rock setter, even though like I, I probably will use it offensively because its defenses aren't good. So I guess it is an offensive rock setter, but it's my um, it's my mon that can afford to have rocks on its slot because I think it also gets super fang. Super? No, it doesn't actually get super fang, but uh, it really should. But this mon has a specific purpose. It is to fit into hyper offense and be incredibly fast. Same with Greninja, and Greninja also gets spikes, which I really like. Uh, I think before I draw, before I made this uh, transaction, I was like, I'm done. I accept it. Not gonna be using hazards much this season because they're on my offensive mons and on this team, Lando can have rocks, but Ape really doesn't like to because I Ape is a you'll see you'll see you'll see why Ape doesn't uh, doesn't really want to run rocks. You'll see throughout the season because um, the way I'll play him, there won't be much of an opportunity for him to have rocks. Lando, yeah, Lando can be used for that purpose, but uh, you know. Aerodactyl gets them too, so that's a bonus. Now the thing I'm gonna have to really cover is that ro that rock weakness and that ice weakness now, because at four mons, that's huge. Because at three, it's manageable-ish, but at four, I think it's too much. Uh, I had a four four mons a week to ground in UGBC season one. I mean, it didn't really hurt me because I played around it super well. Uh, once I brought four <laughs> four my mons a week to ground to go to a game, and it was like against Mike as well, as you can. Probably tub by now. I've played Mike. I think, I think this time is the fifth time that I'm playing Mike in the span of two seasons, or like three. This is the third season in which I am in with Mike, and I'm playing him for the fifth time. Yeah, so it's pretty crazy. Um, anyway, 
these are this is Scout. I named I named Scout because of my week one battle against Mike in the season one of UGBC because I needed a scarf for Nitto King's choice scarf for my Houndoom sweep. Because if he was choice scarf I would have to eliminate him before I can set up nasty plots. He was not, so I was okay. So I could set up with Houndoom and win. Um even though I didn't really find that out, I had to use him to switch into something else and scout another purpose. I had him as for for many purposes anyway. He would scout just to scout like move pools and sets so I could know if Hanun can sweep. And uh, Greninja, I'm naming Greninja Donskoy after uh, one of my favorite players on uh, on the San Jose Sharks. You know it's Donskoy because um, he's Donskoy is incredibly fast and skillful. So uh, I mean it fits. Greninja's got. It, Greninja is really fast and does a lot of things, so he's really skillful. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's those are the transactions. I lose out of Spinner, but I gain a Defogger. I mean, it's not really a great trade-off in terms of hazard removal, but eh, with Hyper Offense, I'm hoping that, I, that it doesn't come back and bite me. I also gain a weak... Oh, wait, no, 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 no. I lose... I gain an Ice Weakness, but I, but I don't gain a Rock Weakness, because Ninetales was weak to Rock, so... Still three weak to rock and uh, four weak to ice. Uh, yeah, but pretty much that's the team. And uh, yeah, I just wanted to do a pretty quick video to mention these because I embrace the hyper offense. You know, it's funny in the chat I was like, balls to the wall, boys. I'm dropping Fat Leonardo and Melisandre for Greninja and Aerodactyl. And uh, that was a crazy move. I I think it'll pay off because I really need the speed for hyper offense. And these guys give me two, you know, solid hazard setters. Cringe is a great hazard setter and Aerodactyl's alright. Um well I, I forgot to mention I didn't really want Aerodactyl, but I needed the speed, so I like you know, had to get him. So yeah, that's that. Those are the transactions that I made. Um Toronto Totera's getting faster. Fat Leo out.